Does so I actually say what the name of the session changed out there? Or is it just, I don't think so either, yeah. Yeah, right. It's, it's not, so uh, Gian couldn't, couldn't make it, so I was, I'm filling in for her with a, a different session, unfortunately. Yeah, so. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, I know. I, I'll just, I'll, I'll let people know once I get started again. But um, yeah, so, so for those who have uh, just trickled in, um, this, this session is, is different than the one that's on the schedule. Um, the, the speaker couldn't make it, so I was asked yesterday to uh, fill in for her, so the session is different. Um, and again, I won't, won't feel bad if you wanna go catch something else. Um, but I think you might enjoy it. We'll see. <clears throat> All right, probably get, get started here then. Um, yeah, so, so again, um, this is uh, maybe different than what, what, what you expected on here. Uh, the, the web accessibility for higher ed session is, is not happening because uh, the speaker couldn't make it, so I was, I was asked to fill in yesterday. <laughs> so again, if you want to go see something else, please, please go do that. Um, I got no problem with that. This session is on um, D8 admin theme and, and um, some of the issues that revolve around that and how, how we solve those problems. So, um, yeah, so um, yeah, given the short timeline of, of, of finding about this yesterday, um, I, I did what I could to prepare for it and um, part of this, I would like to have you know an open discussion about this. I think it is a it is a topic that affects um, everybody. Honestly, you know whether you're whether you're developer, site builder, you're um, a designer, you're you know the actual person who's using the site, consuming it, content authors. Um, you know, I think that one of the areas that uh, Drupal has uh, started to fall behind on is um, you know how we how we author and how we do things from the admin side, and uh, you know what we're going to do about that. <laughs> uh, I've taken some steps, but uh, you know, we'll see where we go from there. So um, just to start out, uh, yeah, my name's Brian Walt. I, I, I work for Acquia in the uh, Solutions Architecture Department. Um, been doing Drupal for 11 years. I've been to nine, nine Drupal cons. Uh, this is the, the third session that I'll, I'll be speaking at. Um, some contact information on the side there if you, if you wanted to, to get a hold of me. Um, one way or another, um, please do reach out and want to collaborate on anything. I'm, I'm always open looking for, for more people to help solve this topic. Um, at the bottom here, I, I, I talk a little bit about, so my role at, at Acquia uh, is, is a bit unique inside the, uh, what we do in the solutions architecture you know, in pre-sales is that um, uh, I run a small engineering team that uh, uh, focuses on you know, 
building out the, the, the kind of the art of the possible, right? You know, as we all know, when you, when you install Drupal, you're not seeing all that much, right? It's, a, it's, it's looked at as a framework in that way. Um, you've heard a lot of things that Dries is talking about to improve that, and I've been, been working with him on a number of those things. Um, and I've also worked on a couple of initiatives myself, and our team's been working on some initiatives to, to solve those problems as well. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I think that there's a lot that can be done here. There's a lot of area of, of improvement. Well, we are making a lot of improvement in this area right now. But, uh, um, you know, given the role that I have, I spend a lot of time with um, prospective customers, whether they're, you know, never used Drupal in their life, never even heard of it, all the way down to we've been using Drupal since six. You know, we're trying to make improvements, incremental stuff. Um, so I've heard a lot of feedback. Um, one of those things <coughs> is, is that we're behind, right? Um, what I've heard is that in a compete situation where we are you know, working to, to, to try to convince somebody that Drupal is the best solution for them, every single customer who decides not to go with Drupal, they bring up and they cite that the UX experience was a major factor for them choosing, not choosing it, right? Happens all the time. I know we all hear that. Uh, we all have our complaints around that. And so um, the other thing is, you know, self-guided exploration as, as a CMS, you know, when you go in and install it, it's, it's not intuitive in, in how to do that. It's not intuitive in what you need to do or how you go about building that. Um, and that leads to abandonment. You know, I think it's, it's a bit unfair, right? You know, that's what, we, that's what we're trying to solve is like, well, hold on a second. You know, this may name what we're looking at at first, but there's a lot of reasons why it's better and this is why we want to prove that. But we really do need to solve that gap, right? We need to get people excited about it again. We want people to be, um, you know, looking this as a solution that can be good for them all the way from the, the developer side of things, which we're very, very good at, all the way through um, the authoring side of things, which we're, which we're not great at right now. So um, that, and then and kind of weighs into the, 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 the technical benefits. You know, we, we can talk about that all day long, but at the end of the day, if we're talking to people who are going to be using the, the authoring tools, <laughs> You know, that can outweigh that because they, they have expectations because they've seen other things. Um, you know, some of the, the, the other CMSs and web content management systems that we've com competed against, um, all of those tend to do a lot better of that out of the box, right? Um, you know, we're, we, we think about it sometimes as a framework versus uh, out of the box CMS, and, and that is true, but I think that there's definitely room to do both. So I think one of the things that I started thinking about is, well, you know what, there's actually a lot of kind of low-hanging fruit here, right? I think that it's not so much that the experience is bad, it's just, you know, they have expectations and we haven't been, we haven't been keeping up with those. <clears throat> and on top of that, I think, you know, one of my opinion is, and as I've seen this happening and as I've had conversations with, with people like Dries and, and, you know, the community members is, you know, authoring an admin UX is going to be one of the most important things to attracting new users, right? You know, they're starting to look at like, what can we do very quickly? Um, how can we spin this up and so we can start working today, but then also build out and expand this project into something that's a lot bigger, right? And so we really wanna try to capture those, capture that piece and try to, you know, tackle that in the, in the right way that allows people to still have the flexibility that they have with Drupal, um, but also gives them a little bit more of an opinionated workflow, right? That, uh, that things are, that are look like they all work together. We have this ecosystem that's so amazing, but the problem with it is, you know, oftentimes the experience of, of, of working with multiple modules together, and I'm sure a lot of you have had this, uh, this problem, they don't, they don't all act the same. They all have different actions. They all have different ways of doing things. And, you know, maybe the end result is what you want, but, you know, trying to train somebody on all those things can be, can be a hard work and, um, not, easy, not easy for people to continuously want to use it. And, and, and the first impressions matter, like I said before, right? Like the market expectations, the, the, where things are moving with all of these, you know, kind of simplistic CMS systems like the square spaces of the world, right? Um, they get expectations around that. And we say, well, you know, there's a lot of disadvantages to tools like that, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, they, they want that experience as well. So we want to drive towards that. Um, this next one's pretty interesting to me, is the perceived performance, right? Um, one of the things that I'll get to a little bit later here after I talk about what I've heard from, from the theme I've been working on is um, an outdated UI makes it feel slower, right? You feel like you're, this, it doesn't work as well. You're, you feel like it's clunky. You feel like there's going to be, you're going to run into problems. That's, 
it's all perceived, right? It's just they have expectations around what the UI should look like, how it should interact. They want it to be like, um, like Google. They want it to be like whatever tool that they're used to using on their phones. Um, we don't have that experience right now, and that's something we're trying to work towards. Um, any device, you know, I don't think anyone, I, I, would, I would venture to say there's not very many people who use their phone to do any type of task inside Drupal, right? It's just not, you just can't really do it. It's too hard, they're, they're not built to be responsive, out of the box, lots of, of the admin modules don't have any notion of doing that. The click points, all that stuff is just not there. Um, but that's low hanging fruit, right? That's, that's the good news there. And the consistency and simplicity, I, so I was saying this earlier, right? With modules, um, you know, there's no guidelines for how you would go about doing your style guides, how you would go about having interaction patterns. We have tools like the you know, form API and things like that which help with consistency, but you can still build an admin UI to look any way you want. You can use anything you want, which is great. The problem is when you start combining different things together, all of a sudden it doesn't work very well anymore. Um, kind of gets into that ramp up time too. It's like, why does it take so long just to set something up where I can put a piece of media on the page um, and have it look the way I want it to, right? Those are things that people expect to be able to do day one. And of course you can do that, and you can do that very well, but it takes a long time to, to get it set up so that it's there. And you have to do it every single project. Um, trying, to, trying to get away from that piece and having more of that experience um, is the direction that we're trying to move here. <clears throat> one thing I've always said is that you know, our strength is also, also one of our biggest weaknesses, right? Um, the ability to, to build an architecture exactly how you want to, to, to the project requirements that you're doing is, is, is very easy and, and really, really uh, specific that is a totally different than every other CMS out there, that they just simply can't do what we can do with the velocity and speed. Um, they don't even have the ability to even have those conversations in many cases. It's, it's an absolute strength of Drupal that I've, I've thought you know, since, since I started Drupal you know, 10 or 11 years ago. But the problem with that is it doesn't extend into the UX and the digital experience. It doesn't extend into that. You can't think that way when you talk about UX. It doesn't work. We've, you know, we try to think about being open and, and allow you to do what you want. And that's great when you talk about architecture, not great when you talk about UX. And, and, and more importantly, it shouldn't be on it shouldn't be the responsibility of the person making the site or the person using the site to fix those problems, right? That's, it doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of repeat work. It's, it's confusing. Um, every project can be different. Of course, you want to put your own business requirements into that when you need to, but the 90% the or 95% of that should already be there, and we can do that. It's just a matter of changing the way we think about it and the perspective of that. And I think that that's kind of a, a really important area to think about when we're thinking, um, you know, next generation of Drupal, next generation of applications is, um, do we want to have that experience be, you know, connected? Do we want the experience of contributed modules to work in the same way? Do we want, uh, you know, the UI to be accessible from your phone? Um, I mean, that to me, if we don't, then we're not going to have any growth, right? That's going to be a huge piece of, of keeping this project, um, you know, having the passion behind it and the, and the people behind it that say, yes, this is what we want next generation. This is where we want to spend our time building projects. So <clears throat> I sat down and I said, well, what can, what can easily be done here, right? You know, there's a lot of things that I, I, I've been talking about with this perceived performance and the, this looks old so it probably sucks kind of mentality. Um, there's a lot of ways around that, and it was very, it was very frustrating to me because I would try to explain that you know those things are mostly just made up in your mind, right? Yeah, sure, you may not like the way this looks, but at the end of the day, it's it is fast, it is accessible, it's easy to use, um, but uh, you know that's not that's not good enough anymore, right? We can't think that way. So I said, well, okay, I can I can pick off a few of these things really really quickly, right? You know, modern theme style guide, right? Like having a real actual style guide. What are the interaction patterns when you click a button? What are the interaction patterns when you drag and drop something? You know, um, how would you find content? Where does the, the filters go? Things like that. There's a lot of things that with just some simplicity and, and making those always consistent across the map would, would make that much easier. Um, which goes into the next thing, the decluttering, right? So decluttering the interface, there's, you know, you've probably all built a, a node type that has, you know, 50 form, form fields and it's like 
absolutely insane to go through and to actually create one. The end result's amazing, but that piece where you're actually creating that is really, really complicated and confusing. It takes a long time. Um, it's cluttered. So, you know, what about like, uh, so I started thinking about like, okay, so what about like the little pieces in between? And this is something that we do when we're talking about demonstrating Drupal is like, well, we have to build these kind of little glue spots in between these modules and glue spots in between themes and how we interact with things. That's actually easier than I, than I thought it was, right? Um, there's no process for that right now, which is the bigger problem, which I'll get to. But I do think that that is uh, uh, something that we can all be thinking about to make it easier. <clears throat> so I said, well, um, I'm going to create an admin theme, see what happens, right? Just, let's just give this a shot. Um, and, and, and I was, and I was kind of making a simple bet. That's what I'm saying. I was like, I bet you that if I just make an admin theme that utilizes the, the style guide that people are used to, um, they're going to think that it's a lot better and a lot easier to use. So I went out and did that. And I said, well, what's going to be the easiest, you know, easiest proof of concept to get me there? Um, and that was, to take, that was to take material design, right? I think that um, everybody who has worked inside uh, well, anything in the, on the web now is, they're familiar with Google's products one way or another. You know, they're going to know how those interaction patterns work. They're just going to see it and it's going to be intuitive for them. So I said, well, let me take that design language and, and make a theme with it and see what happens. And the idea was I'm not going to change any code really other than the, you know, styling things differently. Turns out I did a little bit, but uh, at the end, it was more about, uh, you know, there's, there's small, low-hanging things with the designs that if we just made those look and feel how we expect them to, we're going to get to a place that's going to be a lot easier to use right out of the box, just with that change, nothing else at all. <clears throat> and then the mobile focus, which I've already mentioned, um, I focused on doing that with, where we're able to actually create content from your phone. You're able to create content from touch devices. You're able to click buttons and without clicking five different buttons at once on your, with your finger. Um, you know, that, all that stuff makes it uh, feel and work in a way that's much faster, simpler to use, and familiar with what you're used to with all your other applications. And so I called it a step 1.5, which was like, oh, okay, well, uh, yeah, that wasn't as easy as I thought. So um, turns out I need to make some modules to do what I want to do. Uh, you know, there's some limitations from a technical standpoint around uh, being able to create, <coughs> uh, well, being able to do certain things inside Drupal require modules. Um, there are already themes out there that do this, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, that's what you have to do. So what I did is I created a support module that installs the next three modules. Um, and, and you'll see when I get into the demo why I did that and what those things do. Um, but really, at the end of the day, if you want uh, Material Admin, it's you go install the theme. If you want some of the extra features, you can install Material Admin support, and all that other stuff will come with it. <clears throat> I should mention one of my goals with this too was, which is one of my pet peeves sometimes with Drupal, is that there's never a time where I can just turn on a module and, it, and it's just kind of done. You, you know, I mean, it happens sometimes, but oftentimes there's lots of configuration. You have to go into other modules and configure them so that they work well with it. And I didn't want to do any of that, so I, was, I really wanted to focus on, okay, you turn on this, this theme, and you've got, a new, you've got a totally new look and feel. You turn on this module, and it adds in a couple features automatically for you without having to do anything. Um, and for the more, more or less, that's, that's what it does. Um, there's a couple of little caveats here and there, but uh, I can talk about that when, when I get into the demo as well. <clears throat> and I've got a couple of view cases here as well. So if you've heard of uh, the, the distribution contenta, um, Contenta ships out of the box with Material Admin as its theme, um, both front and back end, which I wasn't anticipating. But uh, uh, you know, I think that that's really gained some traction around um, you know, why it's important to have an administration theme uh, that works really well, is when you think about a decoupled solution like Contenta is, it's like, well, the only thing that I'm using Drupal for at this point is my ad administration tasks. That's it. That's all I do because the front end's up, you know, some other Angular, React, whatever it may be. So we got to make sure that that's the best possible because if not, there's all these other CMSs out there that are focusing on doing just exactly that. You know, Contentful is, is one of those, for example, that's API only CMS. They focus on creating an administration theme and, and experience there and then let you do whatever you want. So if we're going to do that, we really need to focus on. Um, you know, what's most important for those types of projects as we look forward and what's important for the future of these projects. 
um, and demo framework, which is the project that I own, um, in, and uh, showing off uh, various different, you know, how, how Drupal can be more of an out-of-the-box experience. Um, you can check it out. There's an open source version of that. I will admit that that's been uh, a bit neglected uh, lately, but uh, it does give you an idea of like what, you know, what an out-of-the-box experience could be like for Drupal, and this is kind of interesting in, in parallel with what Dries is talking about in keynote this morning around um, you know, Unami and all of those other things that come out of the box, why we need that, why it's important. Um, so, you know, you can kind of see what that is like maybe a first direction of that. So maybe I'll just uh, jump into, uh, well, before that, if, does anyone have any specific questions around, you know, what I'm talking about? Does it make sense? Uh, anything like that? Um, cool. Well, I will jump in to show you, show you what I've been working on then. I guess before I go there, I'll, I'll, these are kind of the highlights where I feel like are um, areas that I tried to focus on, right? You know, forms, Drupal's just a series of forms, right, at the end of the day, um, from an authoring experience standpoint, so um, that was important to me. Uh, navigation, you know, wayfinding, knowing where I'm at, being able to say, okay, I know exactly where I'm at right now, um, and, uh, and I know where to find other stuff as well, which is more importantly, rather than having to go, oh, I have to jump around to these 10 different places just to get this field to work properly, right? Entity reference field may be a good example of that. Um, tool tips, more of cleaning things up. Responsive, of course, action buttons that are clickable from your phone, action buttons that make sense in the same place in every single page. Um, iconography that's more modern and, and what people are used to seeing and expect, things like that. So, um, without any more, I'll, I'll kind of jump into that. So, um, <clears throat> first of all, um, yeah, this starting on the appearance page, right? So some of the things I've been trying to do is, is say, well, when it makes sense to use cards, right, that card model, I'm going to. Um, I've started to do that in a few places, like the theme page, you know, making it easier to see, you know, that we're, again, back to the responsive piece of things. Um, things, things work a lot more how you would expect them to as an application, you know, get more information, it's all there and easy to see without being just a huge long list of a bunch of stuff, right? Another example of that, which I've been working on, is in the uninstall page right now, right? The, kind of the card model as well. Um, trying to clean up the way we think about things and, and, and explain things to people who have never used this before. One thing I always noticed was when I was building this is, um, I was so used to Drupal, I just knew the Drupal ways. And really, that's not, that's not the case for a lot of people. We wanna talk about expanding into new markets and expanding and um, growing Drupal and keeping a, the project that's so great that we all love using. You know, we've got to think about those types of things. So making this card model, why, why can't I uninstall something? Well, it's not always obvious when, you, when you're doing that inside Drupal right now. This is a small example, but um, so I said, okay, well, I'm not even gonna have the ability to uninstall something. I'm gonna remove that entirely if there's dependencies that are conflicting. Um, so just making that kind of an easier thing to, to read and understand, you know, going into here and seeing what those, what those requirements are for that to be uninstalled, for example. Um, is, is kind of a, the direction I was going with this card model. So uh, <clears throat> kind of in the little bit more of the interesting stuff now. Um, navigation again, right? So this kind of navigation model where it's um, uh, more familiar with the, the tabs that we expect to see from applications for, and um, actually having breadcrumbs work turned out to be not that, not that easy of a task. Um, I didn't realize that they just simply didn't work in core. Um, so I had to <laughs> write a lot of glue code around that so that it showed actually the page that you're on. Um, so having the navigation and it trickling all the way down into, you know, way deep into it and showing exactly what you'd expect. One of the more interesting areas is, is I tried to focus on it was actually the content management piece of things, right? So if I go into admin content page, for example, it's still a table, but you'll notice a couple of differences, right? All the filters get moved into a, a drop-down select form here, right? Um, showing you exactly what's being filtered by so you know exactly what it is that you're filtering. Um, the bulk form piece is gone, except you don't, because you don't need to look at, you don't need to see those types of things until you've selected something. You don't, you can't make a bulk action unless something's been selected. So, you know, what I've done is made it so that, you know, as I select things, well now, now I can go ahead and make my bulk actions over here, right? Um, you know, simplifying things that, this didn't do, I didn't do anything differently here. I just moved things around to be more modern and what people expect them to see um, and have them be consistent across the board. Um, again, this, this one down here, uh, so this kind of FOB model was another, 
material design language piece here, um, create new content. So adding content, I should be able to add content from this page. I shouldn't have to go through four more clicks to add content. I should be able to do it right here. So having this open up, showing all my content types here. Um, and so this is, this is actually a material admin support that allows me to do this type of thing. Um, and these icons come from the, one of the modules called Type Style, which allows you to pick icons for all of your content types, for all of your um, workflow transition states, all of those things that you would want to, to use throughout your, your administration theme um, that would help people uh, know what you're talking about without having to have a bunch of different um, names and, and nomenclature for them. <clears throat> so a uh, big focus around that was there. And then creating uh, you know, an editing content, right? Going into the operations and editing content. Um, didn't do a whole lot of much changing here around other than you know, uh, got just making the, the vertical rhythm and, and those types of things more consistent to what you would expect. You can, you can do things again on mobile devices and be able to click things and select them correctly. Um, things like a date and time picker. I've, I've implemented a, a date and time picker that's you know, more what you would expect to be able to do. Um, you should be able to just be able to pull this open and, and find the date you want and select it rather than having to use that little like, I don't know what it is, the HTML thing where you flip through it. Um, <clears throat> those types of things should just be available out of the box, right? Um, and then, and then kind of going in from there is like, okay, well, creating content's great, but um, what about media? What about all of those things? What's the interaction patterns for that? How do we hook into um, finding, how, why is it hard to find content, right? Or find media to put on my content. Um, so, you know, with, with the, the addition of some other modules like Entity Browser, um, we've, we've made that an easier thing to do. Um, I go to articles, example of that. I click into it. Um, and I've got kind of a, a more modern architecture for <coughs> when this loads. Nope. I don't know why my images are not showing up. There should be images here. But uh, um, it wouldn't be a demo if it didn't break at least once. So, um, you know, same idea though, you would get the idea. So if there are these images here, they're all broken. But um, even when they are broken, you can tell that it's easier to see exactly what, what it is. Everything has the same height and width. You can, you know, scroll the window and it should work more or less okay as it, as it expands down in there and you can find all of that stuff again same placement for your filters. They're all in the same spot and every single time that a bulk filter is applied. Um, things like that make it a lot easier for someone to just pick it up and start using Drupal. Um, also just like small improvements that I would expect it to be part of this is, you know, um, I shouldn't be able to scroll in the background when this is open, right? That's, that's crazy. Why would I ever want to scroll on the page behind this at the same time? So like locking that and having the ability to lock that um, be able to click away and without having to click X. Things, just the really small little interaction patterns that people expect to have, um, we can put inside Drupal and have that available for people without doing much work. Um, other areas that are kind of interesting, I suppose. Um, going into, oh, that's not an interesting spot. Um, oh yeah, so, uh, notifications, for example, right? Um, notifications that show up, they just kind of put them wherever they want, right? They don't, they're just kind of in the middle of your content. It's kind of confusing. Um, so what I did is like, well, you know, what I can do is, is put those into more of a um, growl style or, you know, I think they call it toast with, with uh, material design. So if I flush my caches, um, you know, I should just be able to see a flash of that message rather than um, having it be there. And, uh, you know, you can see how this would come up in the corner here. Um, I now have a, tr uh, you know, a drawer down here as well where I can go and find those notifications on that page if, if you needed to see them again. Um, <clears throat> and there's a number of settings that come along with this too. So one, one idea I, I had with this is like, well, I don't want to make it so that people you know, lose some functionality or have problems with the other contrib modules. So um, in, the, in the admin uh, appearance page, I've been trying to make it every single feature that I'm building that's non-standard inside Drupal. Um, has has settings to has settings to actually um, turn those things on and off or or change certain things. Number of years in the date picker um, turn on and off the uh, um, table layouts for the cards. You can go back to the the standard um, tables for that uh, background scroll when the dialogue's open. Things like that. You can turn all these things on and off, right? 
um, allowing notifications just to go straight to your drawer if they're too long so you don't get those massive errors that take up your entire page when, when, they, when they pop up, PHP errors or something along those lines. Um, and that's added some compatibility mode as well. So there are conflicts with the way that I do select drop downs and things like that because it requires full replacements of those selects since I can't style those. Um, so allowing people to go back to the old style in case they're using something like select two or one of those other features that they are the module that they would like to, to use as well. <clears throat> so trying to be accessible in that way is what I'm trying to get at with that. Um, then, um, let's see, go back to my, my notes here of other areas that, um, oh, action buttons. So yeah, as you saw on like the content page here, you know, all the operations get into this, these drop down ability here so you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, same, ish, same with uh, drag and drop, right? All the drag and drop features um, have, have, have the, the same styling that you would expect from like the hamburger drop and the pull down with that as well. Um, the uh, other areas that I was going to, to show off, um, and maybe this is something that I, I kind of originally planned to do on my, my mobile phone, right? Um, but I couldn't get everything all working in the short period of time. But just, you know, just being able to see what it's really like to have um, you know, it on a mobile phone and having these big click points so I can go to any page I want to, you know, having responsive breadcrumbs so that I can still see what it is without it dropping to multiple lines. Um, you know, navigating the site is, is very easy on this. Um, having, having actions that um, respond once you click them, right? So there's kind of that animation there that happens. You can see how those um, notifications move down here when you're on mobile as well. <coughs> um, so, you know, I've tried to give you a quick idea of this. There's a couple of other things that I was going to talk about that um, are enhanced to this experience, right? So when I was talking about Contenta, for example, well, think about that as more of a portal style, uh, more of a portal than anything at that point. You know, you don't have a CMS where you're going and you're seeing the site live and you go around and you create content, things like that. So, you know, small little things like similar to, to, to WordPress that when I'm logged out, um, you know, if I go to the user, the user page there, right? So you kind of have this feel of, of more of a portal where you're able to log in. Again, has that responsive feel to it, so it's easier to use from a mobile device. Um, you know, solving some of those simple problems that um, make it kind of a pain and feel like an old, an old CMS. Um, doesn't need to feel that way for, for something so simple. <coughs> well, apparently that's not my password. Uh, at this point, while I'm, while I'm getting back logged in, does anyone have kind of questions, comments, wondering um, what's out there? Does this make sense to people? Did you do any work looking at the uh, styling and form field that they can put elements themselves? Um, one thing I noticed we have a lot of trouble with is when we're using paragraphs. Uh huh. Man, oh man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just so hard to see any visual hierarchy. Um, I have. Like, what, what specifically were you, were you thinking about with that? The labels of each field should all have some similar styling. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. So for labels and stuff, I have done a, a fair bit with that. Um, and, and also what I was getting at with the description. So every, all the descriptions are now inside tooltips, right? So it just takes up, it removes that space. And in fact, actually, I would like to move that into to maybe where the labels are at is, is maybe the next step with that to even give it more, some more vertical rhythm there. Um, so all of those, the, the areas where you would see just like almost a wall of content because every single field has a description, you don't need to see that 95% of the time. Um, so when you do, you can just roll up, scroll over it, you know, you can still select inside there, you can click things. If there are links in there, it's, it's accessible that way. Um, oh, one thing that would be, would fall into that as well is if I, oops, recent, uh, yeah, this word. So for example, if it's a multi-select field, right? Um, you know, making that really easy to select those items using a click box, which you can, again, use your, your phone to do. And if I filter from that, now, again, I'm showing the, the, what it is filtering by right here inside this little pill. So giving you um, visual representation of what's happening without having to, to weed through a bunch of form fields uh, was the other piece of that. So uh, kind of that bubble up model where it shows, right, this is what's going on on this page. Um, I can make that change by resetting it or whatever I'd want to do and, and be back to where I was before that. 
Um, so all of, the, all of the form fields I replace with um, what, what is part of the spec for, for material design language. Um, and I think there's only a few that, that, that I run into that have you know, some minor issues, and I think I've, I've resolved most of those at this point. Drop downs were, were kind of the biggest pain point for that since it completely replaces the select field with uh, list items. So has to, in, in, in the case where Drupal's looking for you know, specific markup, which it should never be doing, I've made a lot of core tickets around that. Um, it, it does, though, and so it breaks things when it's looking for a specific markup structure. Um, <clears throat> from a developer standpoint, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still in the early phases of figuring out how I can do this, but um, I have moved everything to a modern architecture using Gulp for my task management, SAS for managing variables, all of that stuff. I have like a color scheme guide built in that um, very easy to change all of these colors simply. Um, ability to move things around like, uh, you know, maybe you want the, the breadcrumbs not to be there. Uh, this is a little bit of an undocumented feature right now, but uh, if I go to, I have a sub-theme of this actually for, for our distribution. But in the case here, I can take my breadcrumbs and move them, you know, above the site branding, save the black, and now, you know, we have this other style that allows um, these, these breadcrumbs to kind of be hidden a little bit and have this, you know, shadow show a little bit more and reduce some of that vertical space. So um, another, another Google style that I implied is, allows you to do that. Um, so I can get back to this again, but what I wanted to talk about now is, you know, I did get some feedback, right? So there's, um, it's had like 7,000 downloads and I don't remember how many active sites are using it changes a fair bit and I don't, I don't really trust that system anyway. But um, you know, some of the feedback I have gotten was the, the, you know, the mobile usability, like wow, I actually can do some of these minor tasks on my phone now. Um, nine out of 10 people that, that have reported any feedback has said that exact thing, right? The perceived performance, again, which I thought was very funny, um, we've had a lot of prospective customers who've, who've never seen Drupal and they're like, wow, this is really fast, this is, you know, what did you guys do to, to make this so much faster, or sorry, people who have used Drupal before, like why is it so much faster? It's actually exactly the same, if I change the theme it would be exactly the same as seven. <laughs> so nothing's changed at all, not a single thing. Um, and it's not, fa it's probably actually slower because there's a lot of JavaScript running. So, <laughs> um, you know, ease of use, right? Expectations of where buttons are going to be, expectations of how labels and um, rollovers work, all of those things that oftentimes in core right now, you know, work one way, work another way, depending on where you're at and the, who developed it and what theme it is. So, um, you know, simplifying that and making it a single piece. Um, wayfinding, which I also found really interesting. I haven't changed any of the structure of any of the pages and how you access them, but most of the people who report any feedback is like, wow, it's a lot quicker for me to get to different pages. I, I don't know why. It's actually one more click oftentimes because it doesn't have that weird drop button thing that I think is the worst user experience of all time. Um, having a button next to drop down that you can click. I, I don't know, it, it's weird. <laughs> so I got rid of that. Um, so you know, that, that kind of stuff was, was the feedback I've been getting. And if I had more time to do this presentation, I didn't, again, I didn't know about it until yesterday. Um, my goal was to be able to um, you know, actually do some, some user testing, right? You know, have people sit down and say, you know, go, go complete this task. And my goal with that was not only to do that with Drupal, but have that exact, exact same task inside WordPress, exact same task inside, you know, Sitecore, any of these other CMSs out there, um, and then have them do the exact same task in seven. Say, was, you know, could you do it? Could you not do it? Um, you know, so on. So I, I have a pretty good feeling on what that result is going to be, um, but, uh, you know, I haven't gotten to do that stuff yet. So that's kind of the, the next phase of things. Um, speaking of the next phase of things, uh, step two. Uh, so now that I feel like you know I'm in an alpha stage, not getting a lot of bug reports at this point, um, aside for some contrib modules, which I haven't figured out what to do with yet. Um, you know, how do we how do we make this a reality inside Drupal core so we can do a lot more with it, right? Um, you know, first problem was fixing some of the markup, right? Um, there's a lot of markup weirdness inside Drupal that's just old, right? You know, input, submit, that's, you, you don't, nobody does that anymore, right? That's not a modern architecture for HTML5. Moving all that to buttons so that you could actually style them would be really nice. 
uh, old JavaScript practices I was mentioning earlier where um, core hides buttons that uh, when you click a link or click a checkbox, it then goes and finds that element and clicks it. Um, getting rid of that kind of stuff so that we don't have to rely on the markup architecture and still be able to do the same func functions that we're doing today. Um, oh yeah, this one has been a, a long, long task for a long time, which is the Drupal themes lack the ability to, to have module dependencies, right? Um, I think adaptive theme was, was the first to kind of push this piece here because they, they require a module to, to use the theme. Um, it's like, well, why can't, we, why can't we declare those dependencies with modules so that I can have some consistency and enforce some of the things that I can't do in a theme um, by forcing a module to be installed with it and everything works you know, out of the box. So you know, there's a couple of pieces around that, which is my next goal. I've got a lot of uh, you know, core, core issues out there that hopefully we'll get into some of the next point releases in, in eight, which will allow us to you know, get closer to moving this type of thing into, into core. Um, not thinking that we would move like this material design stuff in there. You know, again, that was, that was an experiment for, I was, you know, it was the easiest thing for me to get a hold of. It was the easiest thing for me to know that, you know, I know people use Google. I know how they, that they'll, they'll have that familiarity. So it's more of the experiment around that. But uh, the concept of having this modern architecture is what I was trying to, 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 to prove. Um, and so the next piece is like, well, you know, what, what, what can we do to solve this? It's like, We've gone through a lot of technical, um, some technical pieces here. It's like maybe, maybe there's some way that we can package styling into NPM modules that allow you know, modules to use the styling inside their, their admin theme so they don't ha I don't have to you know, accommodate for that, for example. So things like that, uh, I don't know what that would look like. I haven't really gotten that far yet. But uh, you know, as I get into to looking at the, the differences and um, and ways that we can start to handle having an ecosystem for a style guide and for user experience, um, you know, we'll start to explore how we make that more robust and allow people to tap into those things that are module developers or, um, or theme developers, whatever it may be. So, you know, that's kind of my roadmap with that. You know, again, just kind of a side, pro it turned out as just a side project that I had that you know, there was a big need. You know, a lot of people started coming to me that I had, I had done no promoting of this at all. They just found it randomly and people started to, you know, kind of grew organically that way, which gives me a really good indication that people are really seeking having something more, uh, more modern, something different than, than what they have in, in, you know, coming with core. Um, yeah, so at that point, that was, that was, uh, that was all that I had for my presentation. <laughs> Um, do you guys have any questions? Please. Um, yeah, again, like in terms of installing all of this stuff, uh, I do have this slide. I can put these slides up for, for people, but it's, it's really easy to, uh, where is that one? Mm. Yeah, Material Admin, and then there's some of the additional modules in this slide as well where you can go and download those. And again, everything just kind of should just work. Um, Oh, sorry. Thank you. I always forget that. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So uh, you you touched on this a bit, but in Drupal seven, if you tried to install an alternative admin theme on your site, the the, the whole thing would break because yeah. you, like the modules, cu custom, usually custom modules requiring yeah. specific HTML and whatnot. Is there anything about Drupal eight that makes that less of an issue, like just with the way that the theme system is set up, or will my whole site still um, be unusable? I, most of your, I, so there is still the issue of, of contrib modules that have complex UIs, like uh, web forms uh, is a good example of that, right? They kind of do their own thing with that. Um, my solution right now has been to, to, I have been supporting those contrib modules inside my theme. By, by you know any of the, the things that are specific to that that are not standard through you know form API and how it outputs the HTML and stuff um, I've been I've been manually fixing those inside the theme for for a lot of the bigger modules but in general most modules that I've turned on just work there hasn't been any admin UI stuff so long as they're not writing their own specific twig stuff that which sometimes happens um, more or less, they, they just work because of I'm, I'm expecting what, that, what those uh, forms most of the time. So I know what those forms are going to be so long as you're using the form API. 
So um, I haven't run into any other than the ones I've fixed yet um, that have been problems. Select two was, the, was, was an example of one where like, well, actually, now I have to have a compatibility mode because I can't replace these, these select boxes. They can't, we can't both be replacing select boxes. So I was like, well, I'll accommodate for that and turn that off as a feature in the theme. So that's mm -hmm. the area. That, that piece specifically is, is what I'm getting at with you know, phase three is like, how do we go about making this easier and more accessible and following the same style and, and patterns? Um, I haven't figured out that solution yet. This was just phase one and say, look, we can get pretty far with only doing themes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what's next? I, I'm going to try to figure that out. And then have you uh, also com compared like the accessibility of this approach to what, just what's out of the box in, in core? So um, as far as I can tell, the accessibility is, is pretty much exactly that. Oh, actually even maybe slightly better because um, the way that I've set up tab indexes or, or way that the material ICSS set up tab indexes for select boxes and stuff. Um, a good, one place I didn't go, which is um, a cool spot, I think, is, is views, right? So um, I didn't do a whole lot with views other than style it, but it does, it just, you know, it's the small little things um, that will allow you to, 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 to work a lot better inside of this, you know. Um, opening this up and having that, but you can see how what I was getting at is it automatically selects the first box. Um, you know, I can tab through everything exactly how you'd expect. You know, everything I can do is with just my keyboard. So, um, using Escape, things like that, which actually don't work in Core, um, work here. So, uh, I would say actually, I would venture to guess that it's slightly better in terms of accessibility. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. We'll have to talk. Forms later, so I'm the web form module maintainer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was We've not coming up to ask a question about that. Yeah. Um, what I am seeing is we're, we're running into in the community similar design, small design patterns that we need to get into core. Like the tooltips one is a big one. Like I had to go and implement something because things got too complex. And the card layout is a huge, like I, mm -hmm. I need the card layout for some of the information yeah. that I'm maintaining. Yeah. Um, but my question's more about in the getting off the island concept. Like you've done a proof of concept using Material Admin. Mm -hmm. I personally see it as completely successful. Mm -hmm. And it brings up the question, why should we build our own admin theme? Shouldn't we use something that's out there in the community? It's, you know, like the material admin is working really well. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, what's the, level, what's the level of effort that you had to put in to use the material admin? Is it a viable concept to kind of just use it? I mean, it, Core can also, also offer two admin themes. It could yeah. also offer the light, core admin theme where then people could use that as a starting point, but this has a much better out of the box experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and what, how's the community? That's, you know, when we start evaluating these, like re, when we talked about React versus Vue, yeah. the question is how's this community working with, is it only Google supporting it? Or, right, right. Or there's now a community. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think that's interesting. I think the, the my perspective around that is that um, I've run into a couple of technical blockers that I don't think you'll ever be able to do in Contrib. And I think that we can solve those problems in core. And so, you know, it could be something where it's like, oh, we, we take this and move this as, a, as an option inside core, but there would still need to be some work that goes to the system inside core to allow us to do more with that. Um, you know, it's getting that technical blocker stuff around uh, dependencies and things along those lines. So um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure, but, you know, I think it's more, I would be curious to know what people's opinions are. And you know, there's a lot of people who don't like, you know, they don't like Google design, right? And that's, that's fine, right? You know, there's always opinions around that stuff. And again, I picked it just because it was so widely accepted and so widely used. Um, maybe we need something more Drupal specific, I don't know. But I think the concepts around form stuff, around tool tips, another thing I know you did with the messages, uh, the inline messages, um, that kind of pattern needs to get into, uh, into core as well. So. Other questions? Similar in that line. So um, it looks much better than the theme, right? That mm -hmm. is currently out there. Um, are you going to be working on this continuously? Like, is it going to die? Like, if we start using it I in hope a few not. months, like, what's <laughs> going to happen with this thing, you know? Um, I don't, I, I think, uh, you know, one, one nice thing about this uh, being out there in Contrib now is that I have gotten. A number of people who have gotten involved, you know, created some some patches, things like that. They're 
Um, also, module maintainers have come to me and say, hey, I want to uh, support some of the stuff you do in the theme in my, in my, in my module. You know, what do I need to do to make that work better? So I think um, you know, we're gaining traction. I'm, I'm mostly the only one working on it right now, but uh, um, I've had another guy that worked with me at Acquia who spent, spent some time on this as well. So I would say that you know, as it grows, um, my goal is that this will definitely be around until something gets solved inside core, right? Or, or something along those lines. And I would, I would rather eventually not be hold, doing this and it would just be a core thing that you know, the community fully backs and supports. But until then, you know, my, my goal is to continue to support it. I have a quick question for you. Um, it looks like you've done some preliminary work with this module and that that work is changing core around. Um, do you see other design patterns that could come in and create a th similar theme and piggyback on the work you've done and then sort of open up this uh, ecosystem or this sphere where we can start thinking about different patterns and you know, mm -hmm. maybe incorporating not just uh, material design but other, other patterns that could be part of this that could be like the Drupal material design yeah. pattern. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my goal is to try to get us to think more around, you know, building a real style guide. And, um, and what I think of a style guide is really um, what are the interaction patterns that we have, right? What does an action button do? What does a drag and drop do? What is, um, you know, when I click and open up a modal, how does that interact? Is it full screen? What, you know, all those types of like small details that are usually inside design specs, right? Um, there isn't any of that right now. And I think that trying to have, that's a starting point is that we can, we can define those patterns, clean up the, the output of the HTML, and then all of a sudden we start to look at like, well now we can start to, to build other themes that are similar to this that use those guidelines and maybe just look like Bootstrap or look like something else that you like better. Um, that, that is totally an option and, and, and very viable. And some of the patterns I've introduced here are you know, probably not technically the best implementation because I'm, I'm limited to inside themes, for example. But what it does do is, is it proves that these patterns are, are really important and we need to think about those because I don't think there's a whole lot of that going on right now. Um, but what, one other thing that I was going to point out that I, I forgot about was that, uh, you know, on the front end too, there's, other, there's also concerns. Like, so something that I've always disliked about about Drupal since the beginning of time is, is um, basically how it <clears throat> just play, when you're an admin, it just places like your primary links and all that stuff just you know, arbitrarily on the page, right? So one of the things that we built was uh, uh, using outside ins, uh, the sidebar uh, is it was, it was what we call moderation toolbar, which is one of those modules I had up there is, it puts all that stuff right in here um, for you. So it's easier to see it, you know? Um, it's more what you would expect from, from an application. So this you know, tells me if my, mod, my, my uh, article is published in this case, um, gives my information over here. I can add icons using the, the type styles module that we have installed here, change the color of those buttons, things like that all out of the box and, and just kind of putting all that stuff off to the side so it's not ruining the design when you're logged in. Um, things like those kind of patterns I feel like are, are ones that um, would make sense to have as, as kind of a, a guide for doing these things. Can you repeat the name of that module? It's called um, um, Moderation Sidebar. Yeah. Um, and that one's standalone. You don't need to use Material Admin for that or anything like that. You, you can go and do that, and it will just put your primary and secondary tabs over into that. Hi. Um, has, has any anticipation been, you know, developed so far around um, extending this to the front end? You know, a lot of these types of controls may be made available to site users who are not using the admin interface as well. I'm thinking like, you know, an order form or a registration form mm -hmm. or that type of thing. Um, a little bit of that with the, that was one of the, the objectives of having to, to use uh, this uh, material admin support module is that, you know, you have to, you have to use a module to access CSS and JavaScript on both front and back end because you, you know, either your front end theme or your back end theme is going to control that otherwise. So putting that stuff inside your module will allow us to do that. Um, so you know, an example of that is this, the sidebar, right? So extending that. I haven't uh, built a theme for the sidebar yet. That's on my, my to-do list. This, this sidebar and um, trying to figure out what to do with navbar, <laughs> whether it's something else or 
just theming this. Um, those are two areas I haven't got into yet that are like your front end administration that you want to feel like the, it's cohesive from the back end theme as well because you know, you're, you're, an, you're an admin, you're an admin whether you're on the back or front end of your site. So they should all look and feel exactly the same. Um, and that's a, that's a focus of probably like you know my next phase of things. Um, so I'm not sure about like using those patterns as part of what your site's going to be or your application's going to be. I'm not sure that makes sense. Um, I don't know. But I guess there, there are libraries you know, in core like just the typical jQuery UI ones. Um, there's some expectations around, you know, I, I've rethemed all that in the back end. Well, now what happens on the front end? It just looks like the old one, right? Um, so trying to figure out ways to, to consolidate those to allow us to have, you know, cohesive front and back end experience and patterns that are the same um, is definitely uh, something I'm looking at trying to figure out. Um, one thing I did do with that though is, you know, for example, if you're using panels, um, I can go in here and, uh, again, my, my images are probably still broken. Oh, they kind of work here. But um, you can see that the jQuery UI looks different, but all of these items that are inside here that I can select the different you know, um, images are all that using the material admin style. So that's done through that support module. And that just comes out of the box, too. So it would do things like you know, putting this, this over here and, uh, and so on. Any other questions? Are you going to make your slides available? Yeah, I, I think there's a, is there, isn't there some method for that that they have where we all put them somewhere? Um, I'll figure that out, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in the past they told me to put them somewhere and I haven't heard that this year yet. So I'll, I'll make them available one way or another. Yeah. I just finished them like 20 minutes before the presentation. So. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I hope you guys, you know, go out and give it a try. Give me your feedback, please, you know, create issues if you run into issues with modules or anything like that, or if you have ideas around what, what could be next. Um, I'm definitely open to, to anyone's ideas around that. Thanks.